Hello, David here in the project for today is replacing my fluorescent light with LED tubes. I've got some four foot lights. This one I already did about a year ago. My neighbor gave these to me. There was a pair in the box and I really liked it. I didn't like having fluorescent tubes around because if they break or they burn out then you got to recycle them and if they break they've got mercury in them so it creates a uh, environmental hazard and then get rid of them you got to take them down to the recycle place where they they take hazardous waste also these uh, these are instant on so and they don't flicker so that's kind of cool so on these energy usage is 17 watts light output is 1700 lumens uh, they claim a life of 50,000 hours but I mean who logs a life for their lights. I mean, am, am I going to keep a log every time I turn this on and off? And if it only gets 49,999 hours, am I going to go back to the hardware store and ask for a refund? No. Also, you should know about color temperature. That's the color of the light that's generated. It's measured in degrees of Kelvin. So that's why it says K. Cool white is 4,100 degrees Kelvin. If you see a fluorescent light that's on the greenish or bluish range of the spectrum, that's probably around 3,000 degrees Kelvin. And the nice thing about these, these are plug and play. If you know what plug and play is, uh, the fluorescent fixtures have a ballast unit in there, and the ballast is wired to the uh, connections going to the bulbs. That was required for fluorescent lights, but the LEDs don't need those. So the first LEDs that came on the market for the tubes, you were required to open the fixture and cut the wires to the ballast and rewire the wiring to the monuments in which the uh, receptacles were plugged into. You don't have to do with this with these. These run through the ballast, so there's no rewiring. You just take out the old unit, put in the new one. You see it's got the, uh, you could tell it's got the two-prong connection for each tube. I think they call it a, I think they call it a T8. That's a, a two-pin base. So, I bought these. These are um, these are a few bucks more. How much did I pay for these? I bought two pair, and uh, those are eighteen dollars a pair. And I paid a little bit more because these have more output. These have uh, output of three thousand six hundred lumens. Uh, it says they only last uh, twenty-five thousand hours, but who's going to know? Plug and play. So it's easy to install without any wiring. T8. Now this one is daylight. 5000K daylight. I wanted daylight because I do a lot of filming in my shop. And I figured that would give me the best lighting. This one here is over my workbench. And I really can't tell the difference that it's cool white. It, it almost seems like daylight to me anyway. What else? Instructions. Turn the light switch off, remove the cover plate, and remove the bulbs. Insert the new bulb in the lamp holder. Power it on. Sounds easy enough. What else can I tell you about these? Oh, stock number? Is this a stock number here? F32. T is in Tom 8. Is there a stock number on this one? Might be a stock number. 937743. Made in Communist China. Company is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's either feet, fate, or fight. Where are these made? These are made in Communist China. 
According to the caution, you have to use the fluorescent ballast in your fixture to use these. So if you have a fixture where the ballast was disconnected, you're going to have to get the LED tubes that are compatible with fixtures that do not have ballast. So here's my existing fluorescent tubes. Watch how long it takes to start up. Switch on. There you go. Other ones over there. Switch on. Okay, the one over my workbench. This is the one that's daylight. Switch, switch on. Yeah, instant light up. That's cool. Okay, when I uh, when I film these lights while they're running, you're not going to be able to see much of a difference because the camera has the automatic exposure. It's going to uh, compensate for brightness, whether it's dim or bright. It's going to make up for it. Also, I don't think the temperature is going to come through. I think in real life this light is warmer than what you're actually seeing. Okay, let's talk about the instructions. Of course, it's always dangerous to work with electrical devices. You know what could happen if things go awry. Turn off the power supply at the fuse box or circuit breaker before you install the fixture. Turn the light switch off. Ground the fixture to avoid potential electric shock and to ensure reliable starting. Double check all connections to make sure they are tight and correct. Wear rubber sole shoes and work on a sturdy ladder. Do not touch with wet hands. This device is not intended for use with emergency exits or emergency lights. Do not make or alter any open holes in the enclosure of wiring or electrical components during installation. The fixture is designed to be used in a circuit protected by a fuse or circuit breaker. It also is designed to be installed in accordance with local electrical codes. If you're not sure about your wiring, have it done by a qualified electrician. Have it inspected. Check your local codes. Avoid looking directly into the LED light. I suppose it's like looking at the eclipse. Uh, account for small parts and packaging. Uh, so uh, they're not hazardous to small children. Wear gloves. Do not allow any exposed wiring to come in contact with sharp edges. That makes a lot of sense. Well, that was a disaster. Those LED tubes didn't work in my fixture. And I can't blame the company because their literature specifically stated that it's not compatible with all ballast. So the ballast in my fixtures were not compatible. I even tried it in another set of fixtures from a different manufacturer and it didn't work in that either. So here's my replacement. Same company, Fight. Four foot LED, these are ballast bypass. With this one, you have to cut the wires to the ballast and then direct wire the uh, connection to the fittings for the, the tubes. So there is a little more work required. The good thing is, of course, they're shatter resistant, but it's got four color temperature settings 3000K, 4000K. 5000K and 6500K. This fits a T12 and a T8. They're uh, dual pin lamps. The uh, uses 18 watts. There's a there's two tubes in a in the package. I got these from Home Depot. Light output is 1,800 lumens, which is less than that other set I had. I would have preferred to have more output, but. Uh, that's the best we can do, I imagine. By the way, from what I've read, the plug-and-play tubes 
use a little more energy. They're not as efficient as the ballast bypass tubes because all that power has to go through the ballast. And here's the switchable part. There's a switch on the end where there is a range of settings. The T-tent is kind of subtle. It's hard to tell when you're in the exact position. So the lamps come with warning stickers to be placed inside the fixture, warning any other people coming along that the only lamps to be used are going to be LED lamps. Here's the instructions where they tell you to cut the incoming and outgoing wires to the ballast about two inches from the ballast and then after removing the ballast connect the live wire to one lamp holder terminal and the neutral wire to the lamp holder terminal on the opposite side. So if uh, you have two lamps in the fixture the uh, the live wire is going to be connected to both terminals and the neutral will be connected to the both terminals on the opposite end. And uh, don't disconnect the lamp holder terminals to make new connections at the lamp holder. Instead cut the existing lamp holder leads away from the lamp holder and make a new electrical connection to the lamp holder we lead wires by using connectors. Use the twist type connectors as shown in the illustration. And also don't just cut the power by turning the switch off on the wall. Cut the power at the circuit breaker so that there's no power going to the fixture. Circuit breaker is shut off. I'm going to remove the old tubes. Okay, starting on this end first, I'm going to bring one of the wires. I got three wires coming out of the ceiling. One to ground, that's going to stay unchanged. And then there's a black and a white wire. I'm going to bring one of them to this side. And the white wire ends on the other end of the ballast, so I need more wire here. So. Make a cut about here. The uh, all four of these wires will be connected together. These are uh, blue and red. Okay, now I'm just going to uh, strip off the uh, insulation about a half inch on those. Two blues, the two reds, and the one white wire twisted together. I'm going to put the cap on it. Twist it tight. This is going to hang out over here. And I need to leave the white wire up front. I'm barely going to make it. On this end, I got these blacks that go, that loop from one to the other, and they're kind of short. Got the wires on the other end all twisted together and capped. Let's take the ballast off. OK, 
Get this cover on. Got the cover on, you want to make sure that the outlet connections are secure and you also want to make sure that there's no wire sticking out that could get pinched between the cover and the base. I did have some wires sticking out, I was able to loosen the cover, tuck the wires back in and then tighten it back up. These do have a direction, the side with the label gets pointed up. You'll see a uh, You'll see a dark line running down one end of the tube. That's the part that points up. And they're working. That makes me happy. Let's look at the difference between the other side. Yeah, I guess the camera doesn't show it. Let's play with the color settings. That's 5,000. 4,000, kind of orangish. 3,000. That's too red for me. I think I want to match my studio lights that I use. Yeah, I think that's 5,000. Oh, that's way too blue. Okay, yeah, I'm going to keep them there. I'm going to work on the second fixture now, since it's the same process as the first fixture. I'm not going to video that. However, I will be cutting the power before I do any work. So it only took one half hour and that was the second one I've ever done. And I like this product, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. If you want to attempt this, just remember, always cut the power before you do any work on any fixtures. There's going to be three wires coming in, the ground's going to be either green or bare copper, and that stays connected, you don't have to touch that. There'll be the white and the black wires. The white's going to go to one side and the black's going to go to the opposite side. And then you cut away all the wires from the ballast, right at the ballast, then remove the ballast. So all the wires for the right side all get connected to either the white or the black. And then all the wires for the left side, all those wires are going to get connected to the green, I'm sorry, to the black or the white. So there's four wires on each end coming out of the sockets. I hope that makes sense. If you're not at all sure about doing this, hire a professional electrician. There's no point in getting electrocuted. I want to thank you guys and gals for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more great videos from David GPO.